but casting for the 1945 film weekend at the Waldorf was a careful process. The producers wanted actors who could bring life to the script and work well together. For the lead roles, they chose Lana Turner and Walter Pidgeon because of their previous success in films and their ability to draw audiences. Turner, known for her charm, was a perfect fit for the glamorous role she was given. Pigeon brought a sense of strength and reliability needed for his character. Auditions were held to find the right mix of talent and chemistry tests ensure the actors could connect on screen. Key moments during casting were when Turner and Pigeon first read lines together, showing an immediate connection that promised a dynamic performance. The supporting cast was chosen for their ability to support the leads and bring depth to the story. Each actor was selected not just for their individual talent, but for how they fit into the film as a whole. The result was a cast that worked seamlessly, making Weekend at the Waldorf a memorable movie. In the 1945 film Weekend at the Waldorf, the director, Robert Z. Leonard, used a straightforward and engaging style to tell the story. He was influenced by the success of the earlier film Grand Hotel, which also took place in a hotel with many stories happening at once. Leonard worked closely with the actors to help them understand their characters deeply. He encouraged them to bring their own ideas to their roles, which made the performances feel real, and Hart Lieutenant, the director, also collaborated well with the crew, ensuring that every scene was set up to tell the story in the best way possible. His leadership made the film a smooth and enjoyable experience for everyone involved. Leonard's approach made the movie a classic, remembered for its clear storytelling and strong performances. Welcome to our look back at the 1945 film Weekend at the Waldorf. This movie takes us inside the famous Waldorf Asteria Hotel in New York City, where the lives of guests and staff intertwine over one weekend. From a secretary seeking love to a war correspondent on his last job, their stories are full of surprises. There's laughter, tears, and unexpected twists. As we dive into the film, I can't help but remember the charm of actor Van Johnson, who played Captain James Hollies. His performance always stands out to me. I first saw Weekend at the Waldorf many years ago, and it was a delightful experience that has stayed with me. Now, we're curious about your connection to this classic film. What is your most treasured memory or personal story related to Weekend at the Waldorf? Your experiences add to the rich history of this movie, and we'd love to hear them. So please share your stories and memories with us in the comments. Let's keep the conversation going and celebrate the lasting appeal of this Hollywood classic together. The 1945 film Weekend at the Waldorf was a large-scale production that required careful planning and coordination. The set design replicated the luxurious Waldorf Asteria Hotel, demanding detailed work to match the grandeur of the real location. Filming took place both on constructed sets and at the actual hotel, which presented a challenge in terms of scheduling around hotel operations. One of the innovative techniques used during production was the early form of process shots, allowing actors to appear as if they were in moving vehicles or other locations that would have been too difficult or expensive to film in reality. This method involved projecting background footage behind live action performances, creating a seamless on-screen environment. The production also had to manage the logistics of a large cast and the use of many extras to fill the hotel scenes, ensuring that each scene felt lively and authentic. Despite these challenges, the film successfully brought the story to life with its careful attention to detail and use of pioneering filming techniques. The film Weekend at the Waldorf is a light-hearted take on the earlier Grand Hotel, set in the bustling Waldorf Asteria in New York. The story follows similar lines, but introduces a lighter tone with comedic music and moments that aim to bring smiles rather than tears. Ginger Rogers shines as an actress who comically confuses a reporter, played by Walter Pigeon, for a cat burglar. The narrative weaves through the lives of various characters, including Lana Turner's charming secretary role and Van Johnson's portrayal of a confident soldier facing a life-changing operation. The film attempts to balance humor with the dramatic elements of life's unexpected turns, creating a unique viewing experience that diverges from the original's more somber atmosphere. While it strives to be a tearjerker, the remake shift towards a more upbeat mood, and the absence of the original's tragic depth makes it a different kind of film, one that offers a glimpse of love and life during wartime with a touch of levity. The music for the film Weekend at the Waldorf was crafted to fit the story and feelings of the movie. 
The composers and musicians worked together to make sure the music would help tell the story and make the audience feel the right emotions at the right times. They used different instruments and rhythms to match the scenes, whether they were happy, sad, or exciting. This careful work made the movie more powerful and helped the audience connect with the characters and their stories. The music was like an unseen character, adding depth and feeling to the film without needing words. Fred Astaire, a legendary dancer, held Ginger Rogers in the highest regard, calling her his most effective dance partner. Their dynamic performances in numerous films left a lasting impression on audiences. Leon Ames, another notable actor, had an intermittent presence on Broadway, showcasing his acting skills from the early 1930s to the late 1950s. Walter Pigeon, known for his significant roles, made a profound gesture by donating his body to medical science, contributing to education and research at the University of California, Los Angeles Medical School. The movie Weekend at the Waldorf has scenes that stand out for their storytelling and visual style. The direction by Robert Z. Leonard shows a clear vision for the story's flow, guiding actors like Lana Turner and Walter Pigeon through their roles with ease. Their performances bring depth to their characters, making the audience care about their stories. The cinematography, led by Robert Plank, uses light and shadow to add emotion to each scene, making the hotel setting not just a background, but a part of the story. These elements work together to draw viewers into the drama and romance of the film. Comments from those who made the film suggest they aimed to create a work that was both entertaining and a reflection of the times capturing the essence of an era. The actors often spoke of the joy and challenge in bringing their characters to life, making the film a memorable experience for them and the audience. Lana Turner's life off screen was as dramatic as her roles on screen. In a notable incident, her relationship with Johnny Stampinato came to a head when he confronted her and Sean Connery leading to a physical altercation where Connery defended himself effectively. Turner's personal life also saw a series of short-lived marriages, none lasting more than five years, with her marriage to Henry Topping being the longest. Her union with Stephen Crane was particularly brief, ending in annulment, only to be followed by a second attempt at marriage. Meanwhile, the grandeur of the Waldorf Osteria Hotel was intended to be a visual feast in the film. The hotel's management hoped to have the film shot in color to fully capture its elegance. However, this wish was not fulfilled, and the film was produced in black and white, leaving the hotel's luxurious details to the imagination. The 1945 film Weekend at the Waldorf was significant in its time for showing life during war, and the varied stories of people at a luxury hotel. It gave audiences a mix of romance, drama, and a glimpse of high society, which was a welcome escape during the difficult war years. The movie also touched on themes of love, sacrifice, and the crossing of social barriers which were relevant to the era. Its portrayal of strong, independent women characters and the challenges they faced reflected the changing roles of women in society. The film's success helped shape the way hotels and high society were shown in later movies and TV shows, making it a reference point for stories set in similar settings. It brought together big stars of the day, adding to its appeal and leaving a lasting impression on popular culture. In the late 1930s, Ginger Rogers was one of the highest paid actresses, earning a salary that would be close to $4 million today. Ben Johnson, despite a challenging childhood due to his mother's absence and later legal disputes over financial support, became a successful actor. Lana Turner, known for her roles in various films, was set to appear in The Sound in The Fury but was replaced before production started. These actors faced personal and professional challenges but made significant marks in the film industry. The 1945 film Weekend at the Waldorf received a warm welcome from audiences and critics alike. It was praised for its star-studded cast and entertaining plot. The movie did not win major awards but was noted for its high production values and the performances of its leading actors. For those involved in the film, positive reviews and audience approval were signs of success and recognition of their hard work. It helped to further the careers of the actors and the director, as well as the reputation of the studio. The film's success also showed that movies could be both fun and well-made, setting a standard for future productions. In a classic film set in a famous New York hotel, Lana Turner and Walter Pigeon cross paths without their stories ever connecting. They first appear together, exiting an elevator, 
and later Turner bumps into Pigeon as she hurries through the hotel lobby. Off screen, Robert Benchley's legacy extends beyond his own career to his son Nathaniel, whose novel inspired a popular 1960s film. Keenan Nguyen, another actor from the film, faced personal challenges with hearing loss later in life, which he bravely shared with the public, advocating for hearing protection. These details offer a glimpse into the lives and careers of the film's cast, highlighting both their on-screen interactions and off-screen experiences. During the making of Weekend at the Waldorf, the cast and crew faced unique challenges and shared memorable moments. The film was shot at the actual Waldorf Asteria Hotel in New York, which meant filming had to work around the busy schedule of the hotel to avoid disturbing guests. Ginger Rogers, who played Irene Mulvern, had to change costumes up to 20 times a day due to the fast-paced shooting schedule. The hotel's grand ballroom was a key location, and it was transformed overnight for various scenes. Lana Turner, playing Bunny Smith, found the hotel setting glamorous, but also demanding as they often shot late into the night. The director, Robert Z. Leonard, was known for his calm demeanor, which helped maintain a smooth production despite the logistical hurdles. The film's success was a team effort, with everyone from stars to the technical crew pulling together to create a classic. In the golden era of Hollywood, Van Johnson was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, a testament to his success in film. His contemporary, Keenan Wynn, was part of three films that received Oscar nominations for Best Picture, showcasing his range as an actor. Meanwhile, Ginger Rogers, known for her dance and acting skills, came from a family with a history of medical discovery, as her ancestor was the doctor who found quinine, an important drug for treating malaria. The 1945 film Weekend at the Waldorf holds a special place in movie history. It was one of the first to show stories of different people's lives crossing paths in a single location, the luxurious Waldorf Osteria Hotel. This storytelling method became popular in later films, showing how lives intersect in one place. The movie also inspired future filmmakers to explore similar themes and settings, creating a ripple effect in the way stories are told on screen. Its influence is seen in films that followed, which also used grand hotels as the backdrop for weaving together multiple storylines. The film's approach to storytelling and character development opened new doors for filmmakers to explore the dynamics of various characters in a shared space, making it a noteworthy piece of film history. In the early stages of his career, Leon Ames made a significant change to his stage identity, adopting the name Kurt Ames after initially performing as Leon Wakeoff. This change coincided with his role in the Hollywood stage production 30,000 to Go. Lana Turner, known for her on-screen charm, shared the screen with Robert Young in two notable films produced by MGM before the mid-1940s. Their collaboration showcased the dynamic storytelling of that era. Meanwhile, Irving Bacon, an actor with a background in military service, had contributed to his country during World War I, achieving the rank of Sergeant First Class in the U.S. Army Air Corps, reflecting a dedication to both his nation and his craft. These individuals brought their diverse experiences and backgrounds to the film, enriching its narrative and leaving a lasting impression on audiences. In the mid-1940s, Rosemary DeCamp expanded her family with the birth of two daughters. At 35, she welcomed Martha Shirley Skidler on July 25, 1946. A year later, at 37, Valerie Dorothy Skidler was born on December 14, 1947. Both times, her husband John Skidler was by her side. During this period, Phyllis Thaxter, who had graced Broadway stages in the 1930s, transitioned to the silver screen. In 1944, she secured a deal with one of the era's leading film studios, Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, marking a significant step in her acting career. Fred Astaire, a legendary dancer, once shared a memory about his co-stars, highlighting Ginger Rogers for her unique strength. Unlike others, she never let the challenge of dance bring her to tears. In a different scene, a character named Bunny finds an advertisement for an apartment on Park Avenue with a yearly rent that seems extravagant even by today's standards. Lastly, the film features Miles Mander, born to Samuel Theodore Mander and Floro Vera St. Clair Paint, contributing his talents to the ensemble. These details paint a picture of the era and the people reflecting both the glamour and the real life stories behind the scenes. In the same year, the Grand Hotel sets created for this film were also featured in Her Highness and The Bellboy, showcasing the studio's resourcefulness. Robert Benchley, known for his wit, faced personal challenges. He turned to alcohol at 31, 
and later struggled with health issues, leading to his untimely death. Xavier Cugat, with his rich musical background from Spain and Cuba, brought a unique sound to the era, influencing the music scene far beyond his own performances. In the landscape of classic Hollywood, Ginger Rogers stood out not just for her acting and dancing skills, but also for her sharp wit. She highlighted the gender bias of her era with a candid remark about the billing order with Fred Astaire. Meanwhile, Xavier Cugat created a space where the stars could enjoy music and food at his Casa Cugat restaurant, which became a beloved spot until its closure in 1986. Walter Pigeon, before gracing the screen, honed his craft in Boston, balancing a day job with acting lessons, showcasing the dedication behind his later success. These stories reflect the diverse paths and personalities that shaped the golden age of cinema. If you have watched the movie Weekend at the Waldorf, we would love to hear how it touched your life or changed the way you see movies. Your stories and memories are valuable, and sharing them can bring joy to others. If this film holds a special place in your heart, let us know. Your input helps us all connect through the magic of movies. Please like, share, and subscribe for more discussions on the films that move us. Your participation makes our community stronger. Thank you for being a part of our journey through film history. Share your story today.